Let's continue our discussion of assessing the relationship between two continuous variables. In this section we will introduce and discuss simple linear regression. We will use the body fat data as our case illustration. Percentage of body fat, age, weight, height, and 10 body circumference measurements are recorded for 252 men. Body fat is estimated through an underwater weighing technique. Fitting body fat to these simple measurements using linear regression provides a convenient way of estimating body fat for men using only a scale and a measuring tape. We will focus on using a single body measurement abdomen circumference. It would also be reasonable here to examine the relationship between these body measurements using the linear correlation techniques we discussed earlier in this module. However, as we will see in this discussion, the two approaches are related but not interchangeable, and each is appropriate in different contexts. For the body fat data, we have a clear dependent variable, percentage body fat, and a clear independent variable, abdomen circumference. Our goal is to predict percentage body fat using abdomen circumference. Simple linear regression is the appropriate approach in this situation. Examining the descriptive statistics for the 252 men, we see that the mean of the y or dependent variable percentage body fat as calculated by the Brozek method is 18.94%. The mean of the x or independent variable abdomen circumference is 92.56 centimeters. As with linear correlation, the first step in performing simple linear regression is to create a scatter plot diagram. Unlike correlation, the choice of which variable to put on which axis is no longer arbitrary. The dependent or response variable percentage body fat should be plotted on the y-axis and the independent variable abdomen circumference should be plotted on the x-axis. Note that in this scatter plot diagram created by StatCrunch, the variable names for the dependent and independent variables have been inserted next to the axes, BROBF for percentage body fat and ABDMN for abdomen circumference. Not surprisingly, we can see a clear linear relationship between abdomen circumference and percentage body fat. Although we see a few stray points away from the main cloud of data, there don't appear to be any serious outlying values that would dramatically alter the linear relationship suggested by the main body of the data points. The goal is to determine a best fit line passing through the points that provides the best prediction of percentage body fat from abdomen circumference. We can certainly visualize such a line, but the question is how do we determine the best line to draw or calculate? In this diagram, we have superimposed the actual fitted line calculated by simple linear regression. This line provides a one-to-one -one relationship between abdomen circumference and percentage body fat. Using this line, for any abdomen circumference we choose, we can determine a predicted value of percentage body fat. The predicted or fitted regression line calculated by linear regression is the line that best predicts y from x. This is found by considering the vertical distances of the data points from the line and rather than minimizing the distances of the points from the line, it minimizes the sum of the square of those distances. This is generally referred to as the least squares method and the reasoning behind why this approach provides the best prediction line is mathematical in nature and related to the Gaussian distribution assumptions about the population from which the data was sampled. If you recall from basic high school algebra, the equation of any straight line can be described as a simple function of the intercept, here designated as b, and the slope, here designated as m. The intercept is the value of y when x equals zero. The slope tells us how much the y variable changes for each change of one unit in the x variable. We can show these relationships graphically. The intercept, b, is represented by the distance from the x-axis to the point where the orange line crosses the y-axis. And the slope is represented by the red distance indicating the change in height of the yellow line for each one unit change in the value of x. 
For the body fat data, the slope would be the change in percentage body fat for each one centimeter change in abdomen circumference. To determine the estimated percentage body fat associated with a particular abdomen circumference, simply replace the x in the equation with the abdomen circumference value of interest, multiply it by the slope, and add the intercept. Simple linear regression uses the least squares method to find the optimal values of the intercept and the slope based on the x and y values in the data. An immediate consequence of building the regression equation from the data set is that this equation should be only used to predict values of y for x values that are contained in the original range of the data. Clearly the equation can't be used to extrapolate beyond the range of data that was used to calculate it. Unfortunately this rather simple and obvious point is often forgotten. Our research goal is to determine how well abdomen circumference can be used in a linear model to predict percentage body fat. This is completely determined by the slope of the regression line. Think again about the equation of a line. If the slope of the line is zero, that means that the predicted value of y will always be the same no matter what the value of x. In other words, a slope of zero indicates that there is no predictive relationship between x and y. Thus, our null hypothesis is that the slope is zero versus the alternative hypothesis that the slope is non-zero. Note that a negative slope indicates that x and y are inversely related. That is, as x tends to decrease, y tends to increase, and vice versa. A positive slope indicates that x and y are directly related. That is, x and y tend to increase or decrease together. Although the intercept is also estimated in this process through the least squares method, it is generally not of particular interest and also often is found outside the range of the data values being used to construct the regression line. Here we have our simple linear regression results. The test statistic is an F statistic similar to that seen in an earlier module for analysis of variance. Here the F statistic is 489.9 with degrees of freedom equal to 1 and 250. Note that for simple linear regression the numerator degrees of freedom will always be equal to 1 and the denominator degrees of freedom will be equal to the total sample size minus 2. As you will see in the StatCrunch demo, the test results include both t-statistics and f-statistics, and more will be said about this during the demo portion of the module. The p-value for the slope is less than 0.0001, indicating a statistically significant result. Our statistical interpretation is to conclude that the slope relating abdomen circumference and percentage body fat is non-zero. For reporting and evaluating the clinical implications of the results, we again use a similar approach to previous tests. Report the slope estimate of 0.58, report a 95% confidence interval from this, for the slope from 0.53 to 0.64, and report the p-value. Of course, we should also report the fitted regression line. Generally speaking, a Y with a caret over it is used to denote the predicted or fitted regression line and is referred to as Y hat. The fitted regression line is equal to the estimated intercept, negative 35.20, plus the slope, 0 0.58, times X, the abdomen circumference in centimeters. The slope tells us that for each one centimeter increase or decrease in abdomen circumference, the average percent body fat increases or decreases respectively by 0.58. For any fixed value of abdomen circumference, this equation provides us with the estimated mean percentage body fat for individuals in the population of that abdomen circumference. Note that we can also use this equation to predict the percentage body fat for a specific individual of a given abdomen circumference. Of course, the predicted value for an individual will be the same as the predicted mean for individuals of the same abdomen circumference. As we will see in the StatCrunch demo, the difference between predicting mean percentage body fat 
an individual percentage body fat is the precision of the estimate. One can estimate a mean value more precisely than a predicted value for a single individual. What about the value of the intercept? As was mentioned a moment ago, when you extend your model past the limits of your data, you should be prepared for nonsensical values. Note that it really makes no sense to talk about the percentage body fat associated with an abdomen circumference of zero centimeters. Another value reported with the simple linear regression results is R squared. The value derives its name from the fact that it is equal to the square of the Pearson linear correlation coefficient. The R squared value represents the fraction of the total variance in the dependent variable that is accounted for by the linear regression model. For the body fat data, the Pearson correlation coefficient is 0.81 and the R squared value is 0.66. This means that 66% of the total variance in percentage body fat is accounted for by the linear regression model with the abdomen circumference. The remaining 34% of variance is due to other factors. The higher the R squared value, the better the linear regression model explains the variance in the dependent variable and the better predictor x is of y. Note that since the value of r ranges between negative 1 and 1, the value of r squared ranges between 0 and 1. Let's discuss the assumptions of simple linear regression. The first assumption is that the linear model is correct. This means that within the defined range of the x values within the data set, the relationship between x and y is reasonably linear. A second assumption is that the scatter of the data around the fitted regression line has a Gaussian distribution. This means that for any fixed value of x, the data points above and below the fitted regression line have an approximately Gaussian distribution. This assumption is usually assessed using what is called a residual plot. The StatCrunch simple linear regression procedure provides several types of residual plots that can be used to assess this assumption. This will be discussed further during the StatCrunch demonstration. A third assumption is that the variability is the same everywhere. This means that for each fixed value of x, the spread of data points above and below the fitted regression line is approximately the same. Additional assumptions include the following. The data points are independent of each other, meaning that although each subject has both an x and a y value, the data values of different subjects are not related in any way. The x and y values are not intertwined, meaning that the value of x is not used in any way to calculate the value of y. The x values are measured without error. The linear regression model assumes that the x values are known. If the measurement of x is not precise, the simple linear regression model may be inadequate and a more complicated measurement error model may be required. Chapter 33 in Motelsky discusses a number of common mistakes made in simple linear regression and I wanted to make special mention of several of those here. A very common and often tragic mistake is to perform a simple linear regression and examine the numerical results of the regression without looking at a scatterplot diagram. It is critical to perform a graphical exploration of the data to determine if linearity is a reasonable assumption and to look for potential outlying values. Another common mistake is to conclude that there is no relationship between x and y when the r squared value is small. Low r squared values can result from the presence of outliers or from a curvilinear relationship between x and y. As already mentioned, a common mistake is to extrapolate beyond the data. This can result in conclusions that are not supported by the data and cannot be replicated in future studies. When performing regression, you should first consider whether or not regression is appropriate, meaning that there is interest in predicting y from x and that there is a plausible linear relationship between x and y. Next, be sure to look at your data by examining a scatterplot diagram. 
Lastly, calculate the regression results, check the necessary assumptions, and report your results. We have now discussed both correlation and simple linear regression. Remember that correlation quantifies the direction and strength of the linear association between X and Y. In the correlation context, X and Y are not controlled variables and occur naturally. The goal of correlation is primarily descriptive in nature. Regression is used to estimate a numerical relationship between X and Y, where Y is the dependent variable and X is the independent variable. The goal is to use X to predict Y. The slope in regression indicates the amount of change in Y associated with a unit change in X. The goal of simple linear regression is both descriptive and predictive. That's all for now.